Hey everybody, my name is Roger Lopez, Technical Marketing Manager at Red Hat, and today I'm gonna to be talking about scaling your automation mesh when running Ansible Automation Platform 2.3 on OpenShift. This is actually an awesome feature that we've just introduced for AAP 2.3, and one of the nice things that it brings about it is that you can actually dynamically add execution nodes to your Ansible Automation Platform cluster without the need of using the Ansible installer. So you can actually use the automation controller UI to go in and add all your instances right through there. So what I'm gonna do in this demo is I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how to actually do that. And it's super easy, you're gonna check it out, you're gonna love it, so let's get started. All right, so the first things I wanna show are a couple of things about the environment, show you a little bit about the OpenShift environment that we have here, our AAP environment that we have, and then the instance. So to kind of speed up the process along, I've already installed the Ansible Automation Platform Operator. We're running version 2.3. And within here, if you click on it and I go to Automation Controller, you can see that I have this AAP 2.3 demo, which is my automation controller. And to go a little step further, um, when we go in and log in to that Ansible Automation Platform 2, it looks just like this. It is completely empty, it's brand new. Uh, if we look at templates, we just have a job template. The uh, credentials are just uh, the basics, projects, and so forth, right? So there's there's really nothing here that we've done yet. Um, when we go to our instance groups, uh, we have two of them, one being the default group, and then one being the control plane group, which is uh, the instances here are showing the controller pod that's already running in our environment within OpenShift. Aside from that, I have this particular instance here that we will be, uh, I've installed rel 8.7 on, and I'm going to be using this execution node to go off and add this node into uh, the environment. So let's get started with the first step. So when we go to the, the first step, basically, um, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that um, we go off and we're gonna log in to the particular instance. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go off and get the IP address of this instance and I am going to now um, SSH into it. Uh, um, and we will get into it here. Okay, so now we're logged in. And within here, I've actually set up, uh, if we look at the DNF repo list, I have a couple of repositories. One of the repositories is uh, the internal Ansible 2.3. Obviously, once uh, Ansible 2.3 is available, for generally available, you're gonna be able to go in and actually add this rel subscription and add in the Ansible Automation Platform subscriptions to make sure you're on the 2.3 channel. So now that we have that, we wanted to make sure we needed that because we're going to need to do some installation to add those execution nodes into our Ansible Automation Platform environment. So the next thing we need to do is we actually need to go into our OpenShift environment. And within the OpenShift environment, there is a prerequisite that we need to be able to um, create a generic pool secret and what this pull secret is going to allow us to do is that it's going to let us use the default execution environment provided with controller to run on our remote execution nodes. So the first thing we want to do effectively is go off and create this particular secret. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go create this secret. We're going to do the key value pair. And one of the things we want to do is I'm going to name it uh, EE pool, uh, e pool credential secret. And with that, I'm going to go then add in a username and I'm going to provide a value. And this would be uh, what you have for your credentials for when you're using registry registryredhat.io. So this is the credential that you would be adding here. So I'm going to be going in and adding my credentials. And then after we add username, we're going to add in password. And I'm adding that here. And then we're gonna add one more value pair, which is our URL. 
which is going to be registry.rehat.io. So now that that's been created for us, we have a our pool secret. We have the different data points, right? The password URL, username. If we click on YAML, we can see this is already base 64 encoded for us, right? So with that, the next thing we need to do is we need to make a modification to the um, configuration of the parameter of the operator. Uh, specifically, we need to add to the spec file the EE pool secret credential. Um, and this way they can actually go off and look for it. So what we need to do is now go into our installed operator, go into the automation controller. We're gonna click on uh, edit automation controller. And now within the spec file um, right here, we're gonna go in and we're going to add EE pool credentials secret and we're going to add the secret we just created as our, va uh, our value. So E pool secret, we're gonna save that and we're gonna let that reload. Okay, perfect. So now we've taken care of that particular process. So now that we've done that, what we wanna do is we wanna go in and add the instance that we just created. So in order to do that, we need to go into Ansible Automation Platform, right? We're gonna to go to instances. And within here, we're gonna add a new instance, right? So within this new instance, I'm gonna go in and get the IP address of this instance. And I'm gonna use that as my host name, just to simplify things. I'm okay with using listener port 27199. That's the default, but of course you can change this if you need to. And then I'm gonna click save. And when I do that, you're gonna see that we get um, a couple of things. One is you're gonna notice this install bundle. So what we need to do is we're gonna to need to run this install bundle on a host that can access this EC2 instance. And when we do that, that's gonna install a receptor and basically all the little files that we need in order to actually have this host be readily available. If we actually try to do a run health check right now, we'll probably see that it is not uh, working as we intended it or wanted to see. We'll actually see it running and it should probably come back with an error. And we're waiting here. It might take a little time for that to happen. In the meantime, while that's happening, I'm gonna go off and click on installing the bundle. So now I have captured this bundle and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my laptop to get this bundle that I just downloaded. And I'm gonna put it right here in, in this directory. Okay, so now that I have it in this directory, we're gonna untar it. And now that we have it on tar, there's quite a few files in here. And let's take a look a little closer. We have the tar and we have the install bundle. So when we go into the install bundle, you're going to see a couple files, group vars, install receptor, inventory, uh, requirements, YAML file, and so forth. So one of the first things we're gonna need to do uh, before we can even run this playbook is we're going to have to go and modify the inventory file. So we're gonna go into the inventory file and what we're gonna do here is provide the Ansible host and the Ansible username. In our case, the host is the IP address, right? So we know we can access that IP address through this system that I'm using, which is my laptop. And But I need to provide the, the user that I'm gonna be using. So in this case, I have my EC2 user. And actually, this is not the key that I'll be using to access that system, but instead, it's going to be my rlopezkey.pem file. So, and this is what allows me to connect to that EC2 user uh, host. So with that in place, now what I wanna do is I wanna go off and run the install receptor. So I'm gonna install using my Ansible playbook. Um, there are, There is one more step that you're going to want to do. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to go off and install the a particular collection um, 
called install.receptor. And in this case, I already have it on my laptop, but I'm gonna go through the process and it shows that there is nothing to do. So, cause that, that installation is already there. So you're gonna wanna install that collection on your environment. And now you're gonna wanna go off and run the playbook. So we're gonna run it with our particular inventory and we're gonna run install receptor. So what this is gonna go through the process of putting receptor and everything we need to be able to access that execution node on our Ansible Automation Platform controller. So when we run this, it goes through that process. It's gonna create the receptor user. It's gonna install things like Podman. Um, it's going to define different packages that it needs. And as it runs, we will see a, it coming back with success. And then we can go check the status of our environment um, within the Ansible Automation Platform controller. So now that it's finally finished uh, the installation process of the playbook, let's go back to the Ansible Automation Platform uh, controller dashboard. So now if we go back to the dashboard, let's go back to our instance and we're gonna see um, essentially unavailable. That's kind of the, the process that we had before. But now if we click on the run health check and reload, what we're actually gonna see is that it's gonna be ready and accessible once it's complete. So let's wait for that to come back. So now what we wanna do is let's go off and create an instance group that's gonna actually show showcase this and actually show us how we can specify running job templates with those specific instance groups of these newly added uh, execution nodes that we just created. So to add that instance group, I'm gonna go off and create one. Let's call it um, Roger Execution Node. And within Roger Execution Node, now I wanna add an instance. So I'm gonna associate my newly uh, created execution node into it. So now it's available. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my job template and I'm gonna use that default job template. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to edit and I'm gonna modify it so that it can actually go off and use the specific instance groups we want, we want to use. So in here, I'm gonna go lower, enable instance group. I'm gonna click on Roger execution node. And what this is gonna tell my job template is when I run this job template, always run it with the Roger execution node, right? So I have the option, that's kind of the beauty of automation mesh that you can specify different instance groups based for different job templates or based for different inventories that you have, you can go off and use it. So now when I go off and click launch, it's gonna actually go off and run my demo job template using my specific instance group. So we can see here in the demo job template, it just gives a hello message saying hello world. But if we go take a closer look to the details, we can see that the important aspect of it was that it used the Roger Execution Node instance group that I had created. And we know that it used the specific EC2 instance instance group because we can see the IP address of it as well. So to basically recap, we were able to go off and have a AAP installation and go and add additional execution node capacity to our environment by just simply going off and adding additional instances to our environment that are actually not even living with inside our OpenShift cluster, right? Because we know that this execution node was residing on as an EC2 instance. So now, you know, the sky's the limit with regards to making it easy to add capacity to AAP. And this is just one example of that. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you soon.